Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about Ana and how I think she's going to shake up the meta. Now, of course, this is all just my opinion, my speculation on this kind of stuff from playing the PTR for, you know, a decent amount, uh, because things may change, you know, because it is in PTR, Blizzard may change some of the things, you know, we may even see entire abilities changed on Ana. I highly doubt that, I don't think that would ever happen, but it is a possibility, so this is just kind of my speculation from playing her and seeing her played in PTR. Now, first of all, I just off the bat, you know, because in a lot of team compositions, especially in competitive play, there's normally one healer. A lot of the time, there's one single healer, and I don't think Ana's gonna fit the role of a dedicated healer. She can heal a lot in very short bursts, you know, so she can get a lot of healing done in a short amount of time, but the fact is, is it can kind of be hard to heal who you want to heal. So say, you know, your team's kind of grouped up. It can kind of be hard to heal who you actually want to heal uh, because whenever you fire, you know, it may hit someone else. Now, as where you're Lucio, of course, you hit in an AoE. If you're Mercy, you can actually jump to them. Um, and, and then once you have them, you can lock on to them. And so I don't think we're going to see her as a dedicated healer, um, but I definitely think she's going to see a lot of play. And one of the things that makes her so strong is the fact that she can heal from far away immediately. And now you might be saying, oh, well, Zenyatta can heal from far away. The difference is, though, is if Zenyatta, say you have a Pharah up in the sky, and Zenyatta decides to heal her, it's going to take a little bit to actually heal her to max. Because, you know, it takes time for the orb to actually hit her. Of course, you know, that time actually has been shortened. Um, so it's going to hit her, but it's going to take a little bit to actually heal her fully whereas if there's an Ana she can kind of you know be able to just sh snipe snipe their own fair like twice or three times and then the fair is good and so you know you're gonna definitely as long as you hit your shots which if you're you know you're, if you're playing Ana uh, and you play her a lot you're definitely gonna get used to being able to actually hit those shots and it's actually very generous so if you're hitting an enemy you actually have to hit them right it's a normal gun but when you want to heal someone, there's actually a very big, tr like, kind of diamond shape around um, your friendlies that if you shoot anywhere in that diamond, then they still get the healing. It, I feel like it's kind of the same size as the Zenyatta Triangle whenever you choose what, uh, you know, orb to put on someone. Uh, it's, it's kind of that size of the triangle there. Um, so she's she's gonna be played, um, especially because there's a lot of times where Zenyatta can't necessarily... Um, he can't choose, like, he, if say there's three heroes, right, so there's three teammates that all need healing. He can't really, in a very short amount of time, heal one just a little bit, heal one just a little bit, and heal one just a, a little bit to actually, you know, get everyone up to where they're not super critical. Whereas Ana could, you know, snipe one, snipe another, you know, with really fast. Whereas Zenyatta, he had the orb actually has to travel there, and then it takes a little bit of time. Um... And then, you know, has to come back and stuff. So, I think she's going to be a little bit better at Zenyatta than, you know, actually being able to heal from far away. Um, and it's especially nice that she can actually um, kind of snipe. Because it's sort of hard to uh, hit long range with Zenyatta. So, if you're healing from far away, a lot of the time you can't do the most with uh, damaging from far away with Zenyatta. Of course you can and, you know, it gets a lot better the better you are with him. But it's a lot easier and more effective... Um, of hitting enemies with Ana from far away if you're also able to heal from far away. So that's just really, really nice. And I think one of the main things that is going to shake up the entire meta and the reason why we're going to see, I think, in my opinion, a lot of Ana is because a lot of the this game, Overwatch, <laughs> uh, a lot of the game modes and a lot of the maps are really, really snowball-y. So, you know, and what I mean by that is, say you're on a map and you win a single team fight, a lot of the time that guarantees you a control point or it guarantees you it's a lot less snowball-y on payload. Um, so I think we might not see her as often on payload, but on things like um, control maps and uh, control point maps, um, we're going to be seeing a lot of Ana on offense uh, because, and, and just in control uh, in general because if you buff someone with your ult, uh, you can, uh, you help your chances of winning that team fight tremendously. And, you know, a lot of people like Pharah or Reaper and stuff like that, they do have ults that can win team fights, like just simply win team fights. But the problem with theirs, the thing that makes Ana so much better than everyone else in terms of that is because 
when you ult as Reaper or you ult as Pharah, you can die very, very easily. And, you know, it, all it takes is one to two people focusing you down for maybe a second or two. And you really have to rely on actually surprising them and stuff. And it can kind of be difficult to get into those situations where, you know, you're able to get the perfect Pharah ult or you're able to get the perfect Reaper ult. And the thing that's so great about Ana is, although her ult requires a little bit of team communication, because of the damage reduction that the person you put it on gets, it's going to be really hard even to focus the the person that got ulted. So, say you're Ana and you boost a Reinhardt, even if they fully understand that Reinhardt got boosted and they all start trying to focus Reinhardt, it's going to actually take some hard work to uh, kill the Reinhardt. And especially when you have this the combo where uh, with Ana, where you know you sh throw her little Jurati thingy um, down, where it uh, if you guys don't know it get, it heals everyone first of all, uh, all teammates. It damages all enemies and then it prevents enemies from healing for a little bit and it boosts all healing done onto teammates. So, if you boost a Reinhardt or a Roadhog and everyone starts focusing them, you heal them with your Jurati thingy and then because they're getting increased healing, you just keep healing the Reinhardt with the Sniper and a lot of the time you can just completely negate all damage done to him because he's already getting damage reduction and he's healing a ridiculous amount and all that healing is being boosted so it's even more healing. And so the thing is, is even if they fully are aware that what's happening, it can be very hard sometimes to stop it. And so in a control map where you do that, you can win a team fight and then the control points yours or in a, you know, control um, on the attack and defense thing, uh, you use it, you could guarantee a, uh, you know, point. And that's, that's really, you know, that's just kind of the way Overwatch is. Do I hope that maybe that changes sometime where, you know, a single team fight can't simply win games? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that gets fixed at some point. I hope they tweak some numbers. Uh, I don't know what they would need to do, uh, but they, I hope that, you know, the game becomes a little less snowball-y, uh, because it, it is a little, you know, disheartening, say you're on defense, you're on Temple Anubis last point, and you defend it for eight minutes perfectly well, they haven't even gotten a single thing, then just one Reaper, you know, kind of comes back, ults everyone, and you lost. You, you, all that eight minutes before, it was completely pointless, because they won a single team fight. So I, I hope the game gets a little less snowball-y, um, but... While it is this snowball-y right now, I think we're definitely going to see a lot of Ana because her ultimate charge is pretty short. It's not that long of a wait time to get it, especially if you're healing and dealing damage. And just, she can kind of guarantee these, can, you know, these point captures and all this stuff. And that's, that's really important. And I think, you know, she's really good in a lot of other, you know, circumstances and stuff like that. And she's good for other reasons. But I think that is one of the main reasons people are going to be picking Ana up is because of her ultimate and how much it can, you know, change the tide of a team fight. And another thing that's really good with Ana is that she can counter ults where a hero is immobile. So say a Pharah or, you know, a McCree, although he's not completely immobile or whatever, uh, he definitely is very, very slow. And so if you're having a trouble, to, or, you know, if you're having trouble facing a Pharah or a McCree because they're getting these really good ults off, um, it's kind of nice to be able to just press a single button and uh, counter that. Although, although I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem, especially with, uh, you know, a lot of people being able to counter stuff like that, like Reinhardt or Winston with their shields, or even D.Va now after the buff, because uh, D.Va's going to be definitely really heavily played in uh, the new me meta, I believe. Um, but that's, that's for a different topic, different video. Um, and then also she combos well with a lot of other supports, especially Lucio. And the reason especially Lucio is because Lucio can kind of heal everyone a little bit when, you know, the entire team is kind of a little bit low. Um, and Ana can actually heal specifically one at a time whoever is critical and needs health. Because although Lucio is really great at healing because he heals the entire team, it can kind of be hard to heal uh, a specific teammate fast. So Ana can kind of fill in the slots. And as I was saying before, um, you know, we've, you know, in, especially in very high competitively played, uh, you know, or in high competitive games, we've generally been seeing one uh, healer 
on per team. Um, you know, a lot of the times it's something like three uh, assaults, two tanks, and a healer, or, or you know, you switch around for some defense here, stuff like that. Uh, but we've mainly only been seeing, you know, one healer. A lot of the times it's a mercy. Sometimes you see two healers. But Ana might actually force double healer compositions. Uh, first of all, because she, because of the her negating the healing, you know, with her little Jurati thingy that I can't remember what the real thing is, I'm just calling it Jurati. But because of her, like, Jurati thing, uh, she, uh, you know, uh, healing's negated, and if that's only a certain amount of people, you know, it, it's just gonna, you need more healing to kind of negate that, because, uh, you're, she's not gonna hit every enemy with it. Uh, and it might be hard to get your support over to the people that actually need healing that can be healed, uh, so she might force that. And also, she's just a really great secondary support, like I said. You run Mercy, and then, you know, Ana, and it's just, you know, or any other support or healer, and it's just really, really great. She's she's a great secondary, uh, you know, healer. I don't, like I said, I don't think she's going to be a dedicated healer. I don't think people are going to be running one Ana and only one Ana, or, you know, out of only one support. The only time we might see that is if people are going for, you know, a really kind of... Uh, pushy strat where they're just trying to get the point immediately and you want Ana's ultimate. But even then, I think she's probably not going to be see, see too much play as a dedicated healer. Um, and she's also really, really strong against people that need to heal themselves or others. So, although she's great with countering or, you know, working well with other supports, she's also very, she counters other supports really hard as well because she can prevent the healing straight up. So say your team's trying to fight a Roadhog, but he kind of escapes and he's going to heal. You can prevent him from even doing a self-heal or you can prevent a Bastion from doing a self-heal. And uh, one of the main people, like Zenyatta, I think were, so <laughs> there's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors, I think with um, Zenyatta and Ana because Zenyatta actually got buffed, um, you know, pretty, pretty well actually the 50 extra you know health armor uh, he got is very very helpful for him he survives a lot more and his increased movement speed while he's ulting is really big but Zenyatta and Ana both counter each other so first of all uh, if Zenyatta is ulting Ana can throw down her Jurati thing and prevent Zenyatta from even healing any of his teammates so of course he'll stay invincible uh, you know he'll stay at full health but his teammates won't actually get the insane healing that he gives off but on the other hand if Ana buffs or boosts someone like if he boosts a Reinhardt one of the great ways to counter that is for a Zenyatta to putting up an orb of discord on the person that was boosted because then it kind of negates ish the damage reduction and it can be decently easy to kill the person so I think it's gonna be definitely interesting because you know Zenyatta I feel counters uh, Ana in a really hard way and Ana counters Zenyatta in a really hard way and it just depends on whether you can hit those those plays but we've seen this kind of a lot you know uh, you know McCree counters uh, people like Farah, but a lot of the times Farah can counter McCree really hard uh, and so it, it just depends um, I think overall it's gonna go to um, you know Zenyatta is gonna be a little stronger against an Ana because uh, the Orb of Discord is a shorter cooldown. That's just what it comes down to. And it's easier to hit because you lock onto a target. So if Ana ults someone, you can just really fast and immediately Discord them because, you know, that, uh, it, it's a short, shorter cooldown and it locks on. So it's just really easy to do that. Whereas if a Zenyatta ults, you have to have Ana's Jurati thing open, you know, on, and you actually have to throw it correctly and hit everyone, because chances are you're not going to hit every single teammate surrounding the Zenyatta. Uh, so that's that's kind of just what it comes down to. And one last little thing how I think she might change the meta a lot is if we see an increase in Ana play, you know, a pretty big increase in Ana play, uh, which I do think we will, I think we're going to see a lot more flankers and people like Winston and D.Va because she doesn't have any mobility. She doesn't have any, you know, movement options. She doesn't have a grappling hook. She doesn't have a really big jump. So flankers that can get to her really fast or people like Winston or D.Va that can just kind of jump in or fly in really fast you know, Ana can't really get away, and a lot of the times she has trouble fighting against people that are right up in her face because 
Her sniper can kind of be hard to hit if someone's, you know, jumping around you and is right up in your face. Uh, the one thing that Ana does have going for her in those type of fights is her Jurati thing. You know, she just throws it immediately down under her. It's a pretty big boost and it does damage to the enemies. But overall, uh, we're going to see a lot more play with flankers and people like Winston and D.Va. And D.Va is just herself going to see a lot more play because she's actually a good tank now. She's a good hero. I'm really happy with what Blizzard did with... um you know, D.Va, because it's just, it's just great, because her defense matrix is actually, there's a point to using it, um, you know, and there was a point to use it sometimes to counter ultimates, but you never had it, you never had it when you needed it, uh, but now that you can toggle it, it's very, very good. So those are just kind of my uh, theory crafting things on how uh, it's going to change the meta, and the things I've been saying, I've been experiencing. It's not like me just thinking these things and, you know, thinking, oh, this is what's going to happen. It, when playing PTR, this is generally what's been happening. I have been seeing more flankers to deal with Ana's. I have been seeing more, uh, you know, double uh, healer compositions. I've been seeing, you know, Ana's counter Zenyatta's and Zenyatta's counting, countering Ana's and stuff like that. So I, I have been seeing this kind of stuff. It's not just like, I'm just completely thinking this all. Um, is gonna happen, you know, but some things may change, you know, we may see, um, you know, little differences, like as an example, uh, in the PTR, Mercy had a, she got her 30% damage boost increase with her beam to 50%, so, you know, we were kind of seeing a lot of, uh, Mercy's and Ana's, because Mercy was really great, but, uh, that, we've already been confirmed that it's going to go back to 30% when the patch actually hits. So, you know, there's a little things that might change these a little bit, but overall, I think this is what we're going to be seeing with the meta um, post on a patch, uh, which hopefully will come in the next week. If I had to guess, it would probably come out on Tuesday because, you know, Blizzard likes to do a lot of stuff on Tuesdays. And yeah, so, I mean, that, that's just kind of how I... Um, I'm feeling about Ana right now. I think she's really good, um, like really, really good, um, and I definitely am excited to see her, her played more, uh, just because she's a really interesting character, uh, and she brings a lot of stuff to the table that we haven't seen in Overwatch, like a sleep effect and a boosting, you know, like like her ultimate. Uh, we haven't seen things like that, and uh, it's just, it's really interesting. She's a really cool character, and I think she's going to end up being really, really strong, uh, but, you know, only time will tell. We'll have to see you know, the competitive matches that happen uh, after the patch and all that kind of stuff, but um, hopefully she's played because she's she's really cool. Um, but yeah, that, that those are just kind of my thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more Overwatch content and news. And like always, guys, see you next time.